says 531, so we're good. Okay. Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. Hello, everybody. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I guess we got approval of the minutes, or do, do we need to take roll call? Andy, do you want to do that, or? Sure, I can call the roll really quick. Okay. Um, Fortney? Here. Adams? Here. Bergenthal? Here. Day? Nelson? Here. Clark? Is Matt Quack on the line? Nope. Sorry, nope. can you hear me now? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Can. Can. Okay, perfect. Sorry about gotcha. That. Roden? I don't see Ben. Stuart? Here. And Von Drack is going to be late. So we have everyone aside from Julia, um, Betsy Day, and Ben Roden. All right. Thanks, Abby. Uh, so approval of the minutes from our meeting on the 11th. We had about half of us here for that. Um, any changes to that that anybody had? Nope, looks good to me. All right, we get a motion for approval. Uh, this is Betsy Day, so moved. Uh, Darren will second. Thanks, Darren. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Opposed? All right, motion carries. All right, moving on to the agenda. Abby, first of all, congrats to you and the whole staff for you know getting this award. This is great, especially on such short notice, pulling that all together. So great work to you and your team. I, uh, Abby gets all of the credit on this one. She did all the work. <laughs> well, great for the city, for sure. Yep, I think um, I think the short timeline really worked in our favor. Actually, um, I've talked now with a couple of people, and I don't think that there were any other communities in Dane County that received a funding allocation um, because mm -hmm. I don't think that there were any other communities in Dane County that applied, at least that I'm aware of at this point. Um, you'll recall that this award was um, for fifteen million dollars total in funding and. 80% um, of the funding was to go to Vernon and Dane County. Um, I believe I've heard that there are five to six awards total across the state. Ours was the largest so far and that they expect um, that there would be a second award or a second round of funding that would come out in October or November and it would only be allocated to Dane and Vernon County for the second um, award of funds, and I don't know how much is going to be available for that. So um, for this agenda item, I was hoping to get a recommendation of support from the Workforce Housing Committee to accept the award. I also have put it on the council agenda for tomorrow night um, for approval. There are, in addition to just a traditional signature from the mayor to accept a grant award. This one um, has an additional 12 items that are required to formally accept the funding. And those have to be done in the first, they're, they require it 45 days of receipt of the award. And so that puts us to like the third week in May. Um, there are four items on the list of 12 that I think aren't going to be feasible in that 45 day time period. And I was prepared to amend the council agenda for tomorrow night if we had to prior to the deadline, but I got a hold of our grant specialist from the Department of Administrative uh, Department of Administration this morning. And she said that they can be flexible with us on those four items. Um, they're all related to actually having a project selected. So for example, executed contracts with the developer, an updated project budget, an itemized bullet pointed list of all construction activities and an updated project timeline. We, we will have those things once we have actually selected a project. 
And hopefully within 45 days, we'll have selected a project. I don't know if the city will have had time to enter into an agreement because that requires our legal team to um, potentially draft something and also to review it. So we're talking at least two city council meetings and the council meets twice a month. So um, I do have written approval to go past the 45 day time period for those items. Um, and what I was hoping for is just a recommendation from the committee to accept the award. We have somebody wants to make that. Yeah, this, this is, is Rob. I'll, I'll make that oh, recommendation. I'll second. Okay, Rob. Rob made that recommendation. Thank you, Katie. Um, any other discussion about that? Um, I just had a question is, so obviously we've gone through that with a fine tooth comb. There's not anything in there besides the things you said that are going to take extra time. There's nothing in there that is unexpectedly difficult as far as the requirements of the, or reporting on the grant or anything like that. Um, there are reports required. I don't think they look like any more difficult than what's required for any grant that the city gets from the state or the federal government. Um, there are some things that our finance department is gonna need to assist with. And then there are other things that I'm gonna run, I'm gonna kind of run by what we have on the books now to make sure that it meets their standards. So for example, our procurement policy, that's one of the requirements. Um, I'm thinking that I'm going to be working probably pretty closely with Tamara Fabian, who's our grant specialist. I did send her the RFP today to review it in the hopes that she'd be able to get back to me with any feedback before the meeting, but I didn't hear any feedback on the RFP yet. Um, so like kind of as I get these documents prepared, I'm going to be sending them over to her and working with her to make sure that we're meeting all of their requirements. Any other questions that anyone has? All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. Uh, moving on to uh, really item number two, which is really for us to what kind of dialogue really, um, Abby, about feedback we want to give to the council. Yes. Different um, thoughts, so recommendations. The RFP, I didn't put this on the council agenda yet. So that's what I mentioned. I was I was ready to amend the agenda if we had to to meet that timeline. But given that we have a little bit of flexibility now, I didn't put this on the council agenda for tomorrow night. So um, what I was hoping for is for the Workforce Housing Committee to look at the RFP that I've drafted um, and me, let me know any feedback that you have or any items that you would like to prioritize with this funding. Um, I, I will mention that I learned of a new requirement this morning um, from our grant specialist that was not in any of the materials and she said she just learned about it too. And um, she got me some more information in writing about it, but there are gonna be some green building requirements that they would like to attach to this funding. Um, I think they're very much in line with the city's goals. And I had actually already included some sustainability and energy efficiency information in the RFP. Um, but what they're going to be asking for is that any project that is receiving funds will need to incorporate one green building standard um, into their project design. And they list several programs that would be eligible. One of them is Energy Star certified, which I think is pretty low hanging fruit for new construction from what I understand. There's also Enterprise Green Communities, LEED, um, ICC 700 National Green Building Standard, EPA Indoor Air Plus, or any other equivalent comprehensive green building program that would be acceptable to HUD. So I know that that's one edit that I need to make in the RFP to make it clear that that is a requirement. They're gonna to have to meet one of those green building standards. Um, but other than that, I would just wanna open it up to you all and, 
and get any feedback you have. Yeah, if that's if it's just one of those, Abby, I mean, that, as you said, that's pretty low hanging fruit. I mean, in terms of Energy Star appliances, I mean, I, I would think most developers, market rate or affordable, <laughs> putting in Energy Star appliances so that if that's really the only requirement, that's not that's not going to be very difficult to meet. Yeah, she was she was talking about how they might require low flow toilets. And I was like, for new construction, I don't even think they sell anything other than low flow toilets. So I'm not too worried about that one. Right. But I mean, if we if we wanted to set a higher bar, I mean, that is something that you could consider. Um, Mike, well, Jacob yeah. Pine has his hand raised if you would yeah. like to open it up for people who aren't on the committee. Yeah, sure. Jacob, did you have something you wanted to add? Question? Yeah, we just, we're doing a HUD refinance right now and they, HUD has different interest rates for if you qualify for their green built, uh, you, know, um, you know, their definition of, of green built and they send out somebody that goes to the property and you know, you have to provide utility bills and all that kind of stuff. And on the one we just, uh, they just did, we met it at a, you know, a project that would have similar uh, energy efficiency that is to this one. Um, you know, the one thing here, you know, that that we you want everybody to keep in mind is also, you know, this this requires Davis Bacon wage rates. So, you know, it's basically I don't know, eighteen to twenty percent more uh, for construction on on a lot of these items. So, um, I think, you know, with a solar PV system and and, you know an efficient building envelope, I think you'll get to what, what HUD is in, in, intending with their green kind of MIP. That's all I got. Thanks. So Abby, on, on this award, um, does it require Davis Bacon? Yes, it does. For the entire project? Yes. Yep, and I included, um, so I tried to copy and paste into this draft RFP, mm -hmm. a list of the additional requirements that are gonna come along with the CDBG funds. And there were a lot of documents that the DOA sent me and I combed through all those documents and looked for anything that looked like, you know, it was gonna be an additional requirement, especially if it's something that's gonna cost extra money. Um, so there are some environmental requirements. There needs to be an agreement in place um, prior to uh, any funds um, being um, spent. So we need to have the CDBG grant agreement in place. The environmental requirements need to be met. There is semi-annual and annual reporting that's required. Um, there are labor standards and Davis Bacon bacon wage rates that are required. Um, the one thing I will note is on the project schedule, um, they, they do seem to be pretty firm about the completion date and that is also extremely tight. So they really want the project to be completed. They wanted construction to be substantially completed by December of 2022. And so when I think about that, I don't, I, I think it would be highly unlikely that a brand new project, you know, a developer would see this and be like, oh, well, all of a sudden I'm going to be looking for a site in Middleton. I think that would be really tough to do at this point. Um, she was going to get me more information, but she was, she felt that that the most important timeline was that the project could be completed by the end of next year. And then um, I tried to lay out some thoughts about selection criteria because, you know, when we receive proposals back, and, and I do, I, I anticipate that we are going to receive at least two proposals based on inquiries that I've gotten. Um, we're going to have to use some criteria in which to evaluate those proposals. Um, and I don't want, I, I want to make sure that the Workforce Housing Committee um, 
you know, kind of understands what you're getting into and looking at the two proposals and comparing them and then preparing a recommendation to the city council. Um, this, I mean, we, we do RFPs a lot for consulting work. Like we have one going right now for a corridor plan. We have one we're reviewing for the zoning code. It's, it's quite a bit different when you're looking at two development projects, it's, it's really competitive. And so um, I wanna make sure that you agree that the evaluation criteria that I've laid out here kind of meets the desires of the committee and the, city, the, the workforce housing strategy that the city approved as well as the comprehensive plan. Because you know, at some point we're going to be sitting here with matrices and and figuring out how we're scoring the two, the minimum of two proposals that we receive. So, other questions that people have? I mean, Abby, I, I did have one one question in terms of. So if there's $3 million and it's really to support 50 additional affordable workforce housing units, I mean, is it, is it the intent that this award would allocate, you know, that $3 million for just those 50 units? Is that? Yes, I think that that is the intent. Um, I think if, maybe if we would have had a little bit more time <laughs> mm -hmm. when we were drafting this, we would have thought about the opportunity to maybe split it up, right. you know, like for a couple of smaller projects or um, maybe think about a different way to do this. I know the village of Oregon, for example, they were considering an application and theirs was for eight Habitat for Humanity um, homes, owner occupied homes, but they couldn't pull off the application in time. So they decided not to submit it. Um, I mean, there really are a range of things we could have submitted for, but what we decided to submit for was 50 workforce housing rental units, mm -hmm. um, and it would be within one project. So it's going to be a pretty big project. It's probably going to be more than 50 units. Um, <coughs> but the funding award is just going to support those 50 and then we're requiring the developer to invest at least four and a half million dollars. So a total of seven and a half million dollars for the project. And I think that we base, we kind of, we worked on that with, um, with Kurt Paulson was in a meeting and assisted. Um, and I can't remember what that is equivalent to per unit. I have my calculator here, but is it's it 150? Okay. Yeah. And yeah, I was going to ask about that. So were you just going to explain something about that? Yeah, it's 150,000 per unit, which I think in terms of construction costs is probably pretty low. I think, wouldn't you, I don't know, I guess I'll ask the developer folks in the room, Mike and Rob and Kurt is on the line too, but are you going to be able to construct any housing unit for less than 150 probably not i mean you know if you're if you're building a project with at grade parking as an example similar to kestrel across from the Wall street co-op mm -hmm. you're probably in the two hundred thousand dollar per unit range if you're building something with underground parking where you're actually excavating to do that you're probably going to be closer to two and a quarter to 230 um so yeah i mean you you won't be able to build it for 150 but right. and i'm so three million dollars right divided mm -hmm. by 50. that's 60. yeah it's sixty thousand dollars per unit yeah i think when we arrived at the 150k per unit like we were just thinking like the minimum amount that we want to commit to being able to match. So if somebody's building 50 mm -hmm. units, they're going to easily be able to match with 4.5 yeah. yeah. million. They're probably going to match with more than that. And our project will be even better of a deal for the DOA, but that was like a minimum commitment level. 
Yeah, and, I don't think the developer should have any problem with with that, just given where material costs are right now. Yeah. Abby, the other reason we had that minimum number was to avoid acquisition rehab. These had to be new units to comply with the uh, CDBG criteria for disaster. Yes. Thank you, Kurt. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. So I was looking at that 150 and I'm like, how much do these things cost? And so I just did a little bit of research and um, came up with 64, five to 86,000 per unit. But, you know, obviously that's one place that I looked and, um, you know, we're hearing other amounts that's in a capital markets advisor place. So, yeah, I mean, I guess I just didn't realize um, how much went into them. And I was also wondering in order to keep them affordable over that amount of time, um, that's essentially why the money's going into them, correct? Just to, to make the overall um, affordability of it for the developer more reasonable on the upfront end. Yeah, yeah. Th this, this yep. is sort of bringing up to me, you know, how little I understand about this is what it is, so. Yeah, this would be the incentive for the developer to keep them affordable. And we did have length of affordability period proposed as a scoring criteria. Um, I think we're probably gonna be looking, I'm guessing at 20 to 30 years of affordable um, uh, an affordable affordability period, but I, do, I guess I don't know that for sure. It, I think it maybe depends on whether the developers bringing in other sources like um, tax credits or any other um, sources of funding that have a commitment for affordability. Um, I don't know. Was that a grant? requirement the length of time um i think that the grant requires a minimum of i can't remember if it's 15 or 20 years now okay it was a requirement and actually i should put that in there if it's not it's abby standard cbg nationwide is 15 years minimum 15 minimum um, but other funding sources may have longer and there's there's no reason why the city, you already have it included as a point system, additional yep. points for additional affordability for the length. I wonder though, if we should say in there minimum of 15 years. Probably. I was just thinking that we might, I mean, it's possible that we could get an application from a developer who's building, who's planning to build market rate right now and maybe doesn't know all the affordability stuff but decides to apply for this is i mean would you see that as being feasible like we have a couple of market rate projects in the works right now i don't know if they would decide to apply for funding i'll i'll add that in there i don't think i have included the minimum of 15 years so i'll be sure to add that I did say preference would be given to projects that remain affordable for 30 years. Other questions, comments? I mean, in, and in really what form are we looking you know, in terms of recommendations to council, Abby, I mean, what are you, what exactly are you looking for from this committee? Um, well, so I've heard a little bit of feedback. Any other feedback that you want incorporated in this before it goes to the city council for approval? Um, it won't go to council until May 4th. So if you didn't feel comfortable recommending 
approval because you want to look it over more, we could have another meeting. Um, it'd have to be sometime next week. Or if you were comfortable with it as written, I would go ahead and take it to the council for approval and then I would distribute it. Um, we aren't going to be able to advertise it in the newspaper probably because the turnaround here is nine days. Um, if you're not comfortable with a nine day period, then we could probably lengthen it now that I know that that 45 days is not as strict as I had originally thought. So if you wanted to give it a couple weeks and put it into the newspaper, we could do that. Um, otherwise, my plan was just to advertise it by sending it out to everyone who's already, you know, approached the city to construct housing in Middleton, rental housing, and then to put it on the city's website and send it out via Notify Me. You know, Abby, no, Abby, I, I, would, I just would just give them the time it. frame on this. I, I would think notifying developers that you've already been in touch with would probably suffice. Because I mean, if this all has to, if construction has to be complete by the end of next year, you know, if you're not if you're not planning something or something's in the works already, I, I don't I don't see how another developer is going to be able to initiate something and deliver within that time frame. But that that'd be my. That's just my thought. I agree. Um, there is one other thing that I was thinking um, that we might want to include in some way. And that would be just seeing, I haven't asked our city finance director about this yet, but he um, has a lot of experience reviewing pro formas and that's mostly for TIF assistance, but um, I was gonna ask Bill if he would have some time once we receive the submittals back to um, review them in the way that he would and evaluate them um, for if it were for TIF assistance and then provide um, some feedback to the Workforce Housing Committee. And it's possible um, that we could have a closed session meeting. Um, so we could have a meeting where the Workforce Housing Committee would be reviewing the proposals in closed session and maybe Bill would even be able to jump on the Zoom and, and provide his thoughts. And then we could go into open session and then the committee could make a recommendation in open session if that would, if that would be of interest to the committee. Thoughts on that, anyone? I like that idea. I do too. I do too. Me too. It sounds like it sounds like I mean that's that's a good way to go, Abby. So we can have an open discussion about that, and because there are a lot of factors here, and making that that recommendation. So I, I think that would be helpful. Okay. Great. All right, um, other, anything else from us? Do we need to make a formal motion on this then, Abby, to council? Yep, that would be helpful to have a formal recommendation. And I have um, identified, so, okay, we need to include in the RFP that we're talking about a minimum of 15 years affordability. We already talked about the green building standards requirements, and I'm just gonna basically copy paste what Tamara sent to me and include that. Um, I'll reach out to Bill Burns to have him um, do the pro forma review and then we'll end up holding a closed session meeting. And just um, in terms of the timeline, um, so we're gonna issue the RFP on the 5th. The deadline to submit the RFP is the 14th and then um, your meeting in May would be the meeting we would hold the closed session. Sounds like a plan. All right. Um, so motion to 
recommend this RFP process to council? This is Katie. I will recommend that we, I will move that we recommend this RFP process to the council. Thank you, Katie. We have a second? Seconded. That Before you take you. a vote, um, Kirk no, Paulson has, oh, sorry. Yep. I, I was just gonna say, um, I found additional information that some new construction programs under CDBG require 20 years. So you, you'll wanna double check with um, DOA as to which, which part of CDBG they're applying, so. Thank you, Kurt, appreciate that. And especially if, if someone combines it with the county home funds or WIDA tax credits, it will be um, longer. I think Jacob has a question too. Yeah, the only comment I was going to make is just on the timeline, you know, I think kind of working backward from backwards from what Mike said before, you know, if these things really need, if the building needs to be really done by um, December 31st next year, you know, and it takes probably three months to do construction drawings and get a project bid out if you're moving fast, you know, that, you know, that's, that, that's basically saying, you know, say it takes 14 months to build it, you really need to be starting construction on this thing by October, November this year. And then if you take three months before that, you know, you, you probably need to be making this, you guys probably, you know, should be shooting to, to have a decision made by Ju June 1st. You know, I don't know if that makes sense to you, Mike, but if you're following my timeline, but I think you guys are on a pretty accelerated thing here yeah. to, to make that. It seems like that that schedule should work. I mean, as long as we can, you know, get those applications in based on the schedule that Abby outlined, and we deal with this at our May Workforce Housing Committee, and then recommend that to Council. Seems like June first is a realistic time frame for making those recommendations and decisions. Would you agree, Abby? <laughs> you're, you're nodding your head. I'm just. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as okay. long as like you know, it, it, I always get nervous when we're relying on like action to happen in the way that we need it to happen at only one meeting. But yeah. the way that I've laid out the schedule now, the council would be able to select a proposal based on the committee's recommendation in May. And then that would still give us um, two weeks to develop the legal agreement with the developer. And I'm told that there are some templates that we can probably use. So I don't think it's gonna be too big of a lift and then have the council give final approval to the agreement on June 1st. So are we actually gonna find people that can turn around a proposal in a week? The, the developers? I mean, obviously we have one who had a heads up, so. <laughs> yeah, um, well, the other developer that has reached out to me um, is also in receipt of the, the agenda information for tonight. So at least has a look at the draft RFP. Um, I haven't gotten any feedback, but I guess I would just say, we'll see how motivated they are to secure the funding because we've been kind of put into this position with the, t I mean, I, this is the reason that we've received the grant is because the timelines that they are outlining are very ambitious for local yeah. government. I think it's going to be hard, Betsy, but I think we're going to get at least two proposals. <laughs> All right, so we have a motion and a second. Any other comments, questions from the committee? All right. Um, All of those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. All right, motion carries. Thanks, Abby. So moving on to agenda item number three, the Habitat for Humanity opportunity. Yep, and I just included this in your packet. Um, this is a letter that Mayor Brar received from the CEO of Habitat. And I thought, what committee is better to review um, 
review the letter and try to see if you have any ideas for how we might be able to partner. Um, Mike knows more about the, the funding that the city is gonna be receiving through the, the ARRA. Um, I know that it's about $2 million total for the city of Middleton. And the city hasn't made any decisions yet um, about how those funds are to be spent. And it sounds like, um, you know, Habitat is aware that infrastructure is an eligible use of funding and they are asking for our consideration to allocate some of the funding um, to infrastructure to support affordable housing opportunities. And I'll see if Mike Davis has anything else to add. Well, like Abby said, under the American Rescue Plan, <clears throat> we know what our dollar allocation is. We're seeking guidance and hopefully we'll get it by mid-May uh, from the US Treasury Department who's writing regulations. Uh, what specifically it can be used for. One of the things that we know is that in the initial guidance that water and sewer or broadband can be used. We don't have as much need for broadband in this area but water or sewer for a development could be uh, potential. And there are other city developments, of course, the city council might want to spend that money on. But <clears throat> there's also um, guidance that um, assistance to individuals and organizations or businesses with who are directly impacted by the pandemic could also be considered. So housing would be a natural uh, uh, for that and particularly Habitat for Humanity, uh, which is uh, absolutely people on the lowest rung of income being able to afford a home. Now finding a location for that in Middleton would not be easy. Although um, there is some property on the north side across from Tribeca that might be eligible uh, because there are utilities at least in Pleasure View Road that, that go up uh, that far. Extending the utilities to a site there and getting the property owner's willingness to do that might be another thought. But um, so there's potential, but I, I wouldn't have huge hopes for it um, in the short term. In the long term, definitely we could work with Habitat for Humanity. One thing I I've been thinking about is that um, uh, whether or not Habitat could build condos. They don't have the same kind of financial issues with condos that bank financing would require of the development community simply because they self uh, finance um, with uh, donations and uh, grants, et cetera. So I think if we could actually partner with habitat for a condominium style development, that would be a great way to go. We haven't been able to find developers able to get bank financing that would allow that. Um, you know, and there might be other developers, um, uh, not-for-profit developers who could internally finance as well. But uh, that's, those are my thoughts on it. Mike, were you thinking single family condominiums? Yes. Okay. So Mike, any, any timelines, similar kind of timelines for the use of this particular oh, funding? A good um, question. The, the, the timeline for the city would be the end of 2024. So it okay. completely coincide with the book, the Biden administration. Okay. So or at least we've got four more years, time. First four years. <laughs> And it is, is there a local chapter? How, how are these, how are these organizations organized? Is, is this the, is this Dane? Oh, it's Dane County. I see there. Okay. Yeah, it's Dane County Habitat for Humanity. I helped to, to found a chapter of Habitat for Humanity in uh, Bloomington, Indiana. So I know that they've changed a little bit in their, their style and they have a little bit more flexibility, actually quite a bit more flexibility and um, the styles that they can build with, uh, but it's supposed to be a uh, functional and somewhat utilitarian. And um, of course involves the slight equity of the, uh, the folks who are actually receiving the house as well. 
There's so many hours of sweat equity that they have to put into it to own a house. And, um, and then of course, Habitat relies on donations of time, material, construction, labor, um, a variety of, of, uh, of things. And, and what's, what's the, anybody know the track record with Dane County Habitat? I mean, are they- Oh, they're, they're excellent. They're pretty solid. They're one of the best in the country. They've done some some big subdivisions near McFarland, and they're really talented and really good. Good. Now, I don't know if they've done condominiums in Dane County, though. Do you know, Rob? They have a long time ago. I know they did off Fiedler Lane. Do you remember that? Um, kind of on the south side, because I remember working at some of those. They were old four unit buildings that they converted. I did not know that. It seems like they maybe wouldn't be able to work on anything other than single family for new construction. Um, I mean, I guess I could be wrong about that, but how would you have a volunteer work on, you know, a multifamily new construction building? It just doesn't seem to really fit their model. Are you talking about a condominium building? I, I was just thinking if it were multifamily new construction, I don't think that would really fit their model, but if, but well, it sounds like. Their model is based on how many hours of sweat yeah. equity. Well, so it doesn't have to be for their specific unit. Yeah. It could be on theirs and other projects, but ideally it's on their, their project. But if it is part of a multi-family uh, project, it's the number of hours. I know it used to be 2000 hours. Uh, actually, I'm not sure on that. But it's a substantial chunk of hours that they need mm. put in as sweat equity. It's not 2,000. That's a whole year worth of 40 hours. Yeah, I, I think it was like 800 um, maybe. It's, yeah, that's more like it. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, did, did, are the ARPC funds for home ownership only? Or could that, could that be used for rental as well? Well, we don't have the guidance yet, Mike. We okay. just know that the money can be used towards individuals, businesses, and nonprofits adversely affected by the pandemic. Okay. And we also know that it can be used for the extension of water and sanitary sewers. There's a lot of other things too, but those, you know, there's things that are more related to the city, um, but, uh, but those are the things that are more community oriented and we expect by mid-May to have more guidance on that. Okay, great, thanks. It is a once in a lifetime type of thing for local governments. Mm -hmm. We haven't had in local governments this kind of federal participation at the local level since the 1970s when revenue sharing came into play mm -hmm. from the federal government and it dissipated by the 1980s. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it was before I was in local government, but um, it was from a his, it is from a historical sense a huge new opportunity for local governments with uh, federal partnership. And the money, uh, the state legislature, for example, will not get their hands on it. It's a pass through um, the governor's office directly to local governments. Great. looks like on their website they highlight being able to do repairs and remodels and uh as i look at my skill set if i were to go volunteer i'd i'd be much better uh repainting someone's house than actually trying to build one <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wonder if we could do something where we um you know asked ask people who were who had been impacted by the pandemic if um, they have some repairs that, that need to be done, repairs, repainting, refurbishing, things like that. Well, and we also know that the uh, adverse impact of the pandemic hit people of color particularly hard. Um, the news is filled with that information every single day. And mm -hmm. so it's a great opportunity for a couple of different goals with uh, the community equity um, um, equity approach and um, for persons of color in particular and Habitat um, works, like I said, with um, 
uh, the very lowest of income from my experience. So it sounds like Mike, I mean, once, once we get some more information, you know, we can, we can take this up again as a committee and, you know, maybe, yeah. you know, offer some more constructive comments and feedback once you know what the program requires. Right. At this yeah. point, it's too early to know exactly, okay. but um, it is exciting to have this opportunity. Um, another one that um, is related is a naturally occurring affordable housing. I can't remember if we've talked about that at the committee or not, but um, uh, Kelly Hilliard and Abby and I have all had discussions with, with uh, it's called NOAA, that's the acronym, Naturally Occurring Affordable Housing. Mm -hmm. And there's a prospect there of um, working with existing single family housing and enabling people to stay in place with help on uh, their utility bills through a more sustainable renewable energy um, work on their homes, uh, energy conservation, as well as um, possibly new um, renewable energy. So both of these are really great prospects, I think, under the, uh, um, I don't know whether to call it ARP or ARPA, but I think it's American Recovery Plan Act, so it must be ARPA. All right. Uh, thanks, Mike. I mean, other other questions for Mike on that? Other thoughts from anyone? Are you gonna respond to them at all in the meantime and just say, or have you done that already? Um, this, this letter went to the mayor and our council president. Oh. Okay. and was just forwarded to me. So I I don't know if Mayor Brar has sent a response. Mike, do you know if he has? I don't believe he has. I think he was in California when he forwarded it to us. So it's uh, unlikely. He'll okay. probably ask me to write a response. Okay. Yeah, we'll make sure that they get a response sometime over there. Yeah, I'm just, the reason I asked, I'm just interested about keeping that door open, keeping that relationship fresh. I agree, yeah. I will ask this of the committee. If you know of parcels of land in Middleton um, that could conceivably be built by Habitat, please do pass that information on to Abby and me. And it doesn't have to be, you know, a big, huge greenfield site where you can do a large subdivision. They do really small subdivisions too. I mean, it could be right. as small as just a couple of lots. It could be a five lot. They built uh, a four lot development on Century Place about 10, 12 years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. You were here when mm -hmm. that happened, right, Abby? I think it was right before I came. Oh, okay, so maybe 15 years ago then. Mm -hmm. And they didn't even used to do subdivisions. They used to just do homes here and there. Right. And probably it's just when you get a, a significant tract of land donated then that, that they can do subdivisions. Mm -hmm. So that's what you're talking about, don't land that could potentially be donated, is that? Right. Now, we incorporated a lot for habitat in Amherst Road when that was redeveloped. And so we do have one habitat family there as well, but that was the last project. And that was probably about, what, six, seven years ago now? I think it was in 2010. <laughs> was it that long ago? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. Anything else on that? Anybody else on the committee? Comments? So you'll get back to us, Mike, when you get more clarification. We'll do. All right. We'll bring awesome. it back to the committee. It'll probably be an ongoing item on the agenda for the next three and a half years. Yeah, no, that's exciting. Great news. Um, Abby, anything else that we need to chat about 
I don't think so. I think that was all. Okay. Anything else from any of the committee members? If not, if I could have a motion for adjournment. I'll move to adjourn. This is Darren. Thanks, Darren. I'll, I'll second. Thanks, Katie. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Good discussion. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good night. Right. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.